so the four roots of true happiness, health, and the way to reroute your lifestyle. And remember, it's practices, practices, not habits, practices. Serenity, exercise, which is playfulness or any way you can get that body moving. And next is L is love. What the research is showing us is people that have relationships, people that are in groups, people that love others and have intimacy with others, not only do they live longer, they're healthier and they're much happier people. I heard a, a saying a long time ago that intimacy ha is into me see. And many of us are afraid of that because there's a vulnerability. And I think one of the biggest blessings of this group is we have all allowed people to see into us by weaving in and out of each other's lives with such love and such interest in caring for each other. Intimacy is love. So let's go around. Tell me, how and where are you finding your intimacy, the intimacy that you need as a human being? Keisha. I am the only person that I'm intimate with because I've always felt <clears throat> so disconnected from everything and everyone else. I create a shell, so, and it's really funny that my family truly does not know me. I've never been able to be truly intimate with my family. So that, that's something that I don't know that will ever happen. I don't know if they could accept me. Thank you. Bruce. Um, I believe I confused intimacy with maybe sex. You know, and uh, thinking that was like another fix or a high or whatever. It was, it was almost like an addiction. I got confused with that issue. And then now, um, I believe, like I said, God has given me a second chance. I really don't have a problem with intimacy or being open. I think I'm a fairly transparent person and I'm pretty trusting until somebody gives me reason not to trust them. Sometimes people approach intimacy with caution, so they... they they don't know if, if, um, if I'm being sincere, but I think in general, I have no problem with it. Renee. I'm not sure if there's anyone who I think really, really knows me from every angle. On one hand, I'm almost transparent. I mean, people say that I wear my, I wear my heart on my sleeve. You can read my emotions on my face very easily. And um, I have a really difficult time hiding that, but I might not speak on it, but you can see it all through through my body. But at the same time, I've, I've never really been really strong at communicating my emotions. And just this weekend, I'm, I'm, I'm learning how to come out of that and really start to try to express myself more. And how has that experience been for you this weekend? It's relieving. It's relieving to be able to get that kind of weight off your chest because you carry it for so long, it starts to get really heavy. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm learning how to open myself up to that. Thank you very much. Julie. Um, I'm really lucky in relationships on, on an intimate level. I think I have a good, good relationship with my kids and my parents and my brothers and sisters. But I'm especially lucky with Randy, um, my guy. I wish I had met him a long time ago. Kevin. I'm pretty intimate with myself, but there's the close wall, it's like, it goes cling. <laughs> it's like, it shuts down. It, you can't get past a certain point. This weekend I've been doing that too. It's, it's a lot of sharing and a lot of interaction. I have to like walk off or I have to be by myself. And, and I think a, a real part of the intimate or having a partner, I'm scared to death of being trapped yes. with someone I can't, disconnect from and that, that scares the daylights out of me because this is about boundaries and you have to claim this for yourself you have to claim as S self when you develop your practice it's amazing what it's going to do to your intimacy your intimacy with yourself your partner your children um, it changes your whole life everybody it really does